Hi there. So today, as suggested, we're going to see how to use Galapagos. But first of all, I'm actually going to show you this simple script that I made in order to understand how Galapagos works. So first of all, I created a simple rectangle, uh, actually a square, with the, um, the polygon uh, component. So I just made a polygon with four segments and a radius of three, and I rotated it in order to get a uh, square. And with this square, I made a movement on, um, on two different vectors. So if I just display this one and hide this one, you can see that this movement here with the vector x, y, z, actually I'm going to use only the x, y because I'm just moving on the two-dimensional um, plane. I can move one square on the right, so starting from 0 to 3 and from 0 to 3 on uh, on the y but on the other side the other uh, square i'm going to move it from uh, 0 to minus 3 and to 0 to minus 3 in the x and y direction so i have t these two squares that um, they overlap in uh, in the center here and what i'm doing here is just uh, making the intersection between these two uh, squares so if I move this geometry here so you can see that in the intersection between these two is this rectangle here and uh, I can just move it here and you can see that the green rectangle actually gets smaller so the aim here is to get the uh, maximum area of this intersection so I'm just calculating the area and as you can see here if I just move the sliders back the area gets bigger and bigger until I get 18 because they overlap. So here what I want to tell to Galapagos is to find the best solution in order to maximize my area. So if I use the Galapagos component here you can see that it has two inputs the genomes and the fitness. The fitness is basically the objective so it's the goal and here the goal is to maximize the area so I'm just connecting the fitness to my area and the genomes are, as you can see here, all the sliders that define my geometry. So in order to change my area, in, I need to change the, these sliders here to get it smaller and bigger. So I'm just connecting the genomes to these gene pools. And I connect this one here and the second one pressing shift here. So I have connected my genomes and my objective. So uh, what you need to know is that uh, Galapagos is a evolution evolutionary solver, but it's mono objective. So you can just use one fitness. You cannot use two or three different fitness because it's just mono objective. There are also other plugins such as, for example, Wallacy that I also used. Uh, that is a um, a an evolutionary solver, but multi objective. So here. With Wallace X, you can connect more objective at the same time. But let's stick with Galapagos and let's see how it works. So first of all, uh, in the options, I have to set my options here in order to uh, tell Galapagos what to do. So my uh, goal here is to maximize the area. So I can either minimize or maximize the fitness. I can also put a threshold. A threshold is the a value that when it reaches it, it basically stops uh, the simulation, but I don't want to use any specific value. You can enable a runtime because with the um, like very complex geometries or scripts, it gets a lot of time to uh, calculate all the solutions. So you can enable it. I don't need to because it's really quick with these simple geometries. And uh, here in the evolutionary solvers, you can actually um, change the algorithm parameters. So uh, what you need to know also is that um, Galapagos works with a specific uh, algorithm that uses uh, generation and population in order to find the best solution. So here we can set the generation that it's the max stagnant and the generation are just the cycles of my simulation and the population are the number of solution inside my uh, generation. So I have 50 uh, solution inside each generation. 
So 50 times 50 is 2,500 solutions at the end. The initial boost is really helpful when you have uh, complex geometries because the initial uh, population is set randomly. And uh, if you have just, let's say, 50 um, values for the first generation, you're limiting the first 50 uh, solution to, uh, to actually a number that it's relatively small to get the best solution because uh, what the algorithm do is uh, taking the best solution in each generation and uses that to create the next generation. So what you need to do at the beginning is probably set an initial boost, uh, let's say three, four or five times higher in order to get more solutions at the beginning so he can filter the best solutions to create the next generation. But since my geometries are really simple, I'm just stick with two. The maintain and inbreeding, uh, it's like relatively to uh, the algorithms. So I won't explain it because uh, it's a little bit complicated. So let's go to solves here, solvers, sorry. And uh, you have uh, this one and this, uh, this is the evolutionary solver and you will see the, um, the solution displayed here. Uh, you have the start solver. You don't need to, to know this one because it's another type of uh, solver. I've never used it. And here you can basically show all the genomes in the viewport because while you start the solver, you can see the, the movements here of uh, uh, the squares because he's going to move the, the sliders. So you can see all of them. You can see just the best one, so the better genomes, or you can just set to none, so you won't see any changes here, but you will see it here. I actually like this one because uh, you can see what's really happening here. But when the geometries are really uh, complicated, you will probably stick to the mid one because it gets heavier and uh, um, you need actually so much time to run the simulation. So I'm just using the first one right now and I just play start. So as you can see at the beginning, it just set numbers randomly. But you will notice that uh, uh, along the simulation, the two squares uh, are getting closer and closer because the algorithm understand that to get the highest uh, area, so you can see here the values, the highest area that he found right now, it's eight. So he understand that he needs to bring those two squares closer to uh, get the highest area. So it gets higher and higher. Here you can see actually uh, this line represent the genomes. So the first two are basically the first two sliders and actually he needs to bring it back to zero here. So it goes from zero to three here and the same goes on the other side. So here it's zero and here it's minus three. So as you can see now, the squares are getting closer and closer and the area is getting bigger because Galapagos understand that he needs to bring those closer until eventually they overlap and they get one on top of the other and the area will be actually 18, the maximum area. So the solvers just continue with the simulation and I can either stop <clears throat> or I can see till the end of the simulation. But I can actually stop here right now just to explain what's going on. So here you can see that the best uh, area that he found is 17.4. So if I press reinstate, it's just this area here. If I change to 16.79, so the last one, and I reinstate, you can see that it gets uh, like a little bit different. But we can see uh, like on the previous one, so let's use a 7.79 or 8, let's say, and rain state. You can see that now the squares are put on different uh, parts and the intersection is this one and the area is 8.16. So what I want to do is taking the best solution here. So I'm just going to use the 17.4 and always remember to press rain state in order to see the change here also uh, in the... In the sliders so you can see that they are close to zero if I change with the other one you can see that they move so basically he just moved the sliders to get the best solution so I press reinstate and press OK 
So this is the best solution that uh, the Galapagos found, but you can run multiple solutions to find different um, like confirmation and different shapes if you want. But you need to remember that once you close the simulation and you open it again, everything is lost. So if you want to make analysis based on the, this solution, never close this, uh, this window until you're done with your uh, analysis. And then you can press OK after pressing green state on the geometries that you satisfied with. So you can press OK and you have your, let's say, best solution for this specific uh, goal. So this is basically it for Galapagos. If you didn't understand something, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next tutorial.